Well, it's finally time. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a character in Project Arrhythmia. For real this time. So after the tutorial's done, I'm gonna briefly interview a few people from the PA community so they can talk about stuff they've made and what to show off. So this is a concept I came up with a few months ago for a boss fight. I gave her the name Hazel for now, and I do plan to give her her own level at some point in the future, but you know, I figured I might as well just use this concept as an example for making a character. Hey, isn't that just a copy of Blixer? So the thing to remember about characters, I'm using another one of my characters as an example, is that all the different body parts, like the eyes or the floating hands or whatever, they are all parented to each other. Most of the parts, though, are parented to the base or the primary shape of the character. The base, in this case, is this red semicircle. And that way, you can move the base around, and all the body parts will follow it. So, I've changed some stuff in the theme right here, just so that it has the colors I want to use for my character. For my base objects, in my case, I'm going to be using a blue circle. So, I will call this thing Hazel Base. And then, I will make the pink outline. So now, I will parent this thing to Hazel Face. This whole part of the video really is just gonna be me making different body parts and then just parenting them to the base right here. All I have to do now, that I have all of my parts ready, is to just parent everything to the base. So I have all the body parts made and I have the base. Technically I'm done already, I could just keep it like this. And when I want to move the character, I just have to move the base around and everything would follow it. But what about if you wanted to grow and shrink your entire character? That's where scale parenting comes in. If we go to any one of Hazel's body parts, like this antler right here, and we click this little arrow on the right next to the parent, this is where we can alter the parenting settings for this child object. So these three buttons right here, they let you turn on and off the various parenting settings for the child. This one is for position, this one is for scale, and this one is for rotation. And right now the only ones that are enabled are position and rotation. Which means if the parent moves or rotates, the child will move or rotate along with it. But if the parent changes size, the child will not change size. So next, these boxes that you can put numbers in, these represent the parent offset, something I won't be using for Hazel, but I should probably talk about anyways. These let you customize the delay between what the parent does and what the child does. For instance, if I type in 1 to the position row, the child will wait 1 second before following the parent when the parent moves. But I will not be using parent offset for this, so I'll just put it back to 0. So as I said, right now, the object's position and rotation are synced up with the parent, but the scale is not. Meaning when I change the base's size, the antler will not change size with it, and neither will anything else. So obviously I just have to turn this on, right? It's not that simple. See, right now, the base, the thing that all of these things are parented to, it has a scale of 9-9. Nine, nine. And the, the antler thing that I was just messing around with, this thing has a scale of 7, 3. When I turned this thing on, when I turned on the scale parenting, the scale of this antler is being multiplied by the scale of the base, multiplying the two x-coordinates and then multiplying the two y-coordinates 
to get a scale of, I believe, 6327. But you're probably thinking, where, where did it even go? I'll show you where it went. If I just zoom out a bit here. That's where it went. <laughs> Obviously, I don't want that. So I'm going to be showing a little trick just in case you do want to grow your entire character. So first, I'm just going to slide everything down. Then I will make a new object. Normal. I will call it Hazel Scale. I will give it a scale of 1, 1. Then I will just parent Hazel Base to Hazel Scale and then turn on the scale parenting right here. And we're done! Now, whenever I want to change Hazel's scale, all I have to do is change the scale of this object I just made. Right now the scale is at 1, 1, which means Hazel's scale will be 1 times as big, which is just the default size. So if I switch the scale to 2, 2, she will be twice as big. 3-3 three, three makes her three times as big. Y you get the idea. That's how you make a character and that's how you make a change size. I want to take this chance to just show another cool thing you can do with parenting. This is, again, the other boss I made called the manager for an upcoming level. Kind of looks like Plankton right here. But I made it so that if you shift his eyebrow thing down, it covers up his eye. And that's because there's an object parented to his eyebrow that's the same color as the base. If I change the color, you can see very clearly it's right there. So when I move the eyebrow up and down, you can see that this invisible object follows it. But enough about me. Let's talk to some people from the community. Hey! I. You remember when I said I didn't have a script? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to, to like show off what you did for your Spectra level because you know it has those consistently moving boss parts like the wings. Yes. And you know, if you could just, you know, show off like the keyframes and stuff. What I did um when I make my rigs, I usually have all my details to the left side before I have the base. And I oh. like to have my bases out of these empty objects, so, like, I can actually squish and move them however I want when I need that. For, like, for example, for her antennae, they actually squished a lot, and they wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't use an empty base. Yeah, so I, lit I literally never thought of putting details in the back. I've always had everything just close yeah. together. Yeah, it's better to have um, the bases and the stuff that actually move over to the left, no, to the right side just so that you can a animate them easier. Uh, could we- And this is- mm -hmm. What? No, yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, this is not in the new version still, so this might get outdated very quickly, unfortunately. Oh, uh, well, well, that's fine, but uh, I was wondering if you could click on one of the wings. Uh, sure. So, just so we could see, like, how you got them to move and stuff. What I did for the wings, I have them uh, scale parented along with the the wing base here and what i did to make them move i just have one really really long object event okay you can see right there and i just copied and i pasted the keyframes for her wings yeah. to move the way that they do so it keeps going from like from full size to zero to full size over and over pretty much yeah could i use inside and outside for everything oh yeah that's so I feel like everyone uses yeah. in, in, in outside yeah. because it's so smooth. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do that at first. I used a lot more linear stuff at first, like for Twilight, and I've uh, I learned since then. Oh. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much how I got them to move. Is that it? <laughs> I wanted to uh, show off uh, the lip syncing you did for uh, the get down level. Yes. Yes. And even for Doom. So. I wanted to focus on the animation you did uh, for Freaky's mouth. Uh, it must have taken a really long time. It did actually, and it was the first thing that I did for the boss at this point. That's when it starts moving? That's when it starts moving. So yeah. the mouth is composed of two half circles that are completely independent, but now are in the same position. 
And then you have the teeth that are linked to targets. Can we see like the keyframes for the the mouth? Oh yep. my god. <laughs> That's a lot of Oh my yep. god. <laughs> they are really really tied up all of them. So it changes size a whole lot. They are really tied together and this is just because well, you need to create the position at which mouth moves. That and is a lot of keyframes. And this is why I struggle with boss animation. I can't really keep track of all this stuff. I simply try to imitate what my mouth was making. As in, what movement they were making. You were, you were like, showing Which, it like you were doing it in the mirror or something? Not even in the mirror, I just felt, literally felt or even imagined how my mouth was moving for each syllab that, that I was doing. And for literally 10 hours straight, I have made the entire lip syncing. 10 hours? And after that, I was... Yes, 10 hours. Wow. It took almost, averagely, 10 hours to make the lip sync for the level. Well, that's some dedication right there. Um, if you wonder what are the movements, or rather the easing type that I use for the mouth, it's out -sync. Almost all of them are out -sync. I feel like out sign, in out sign, they're all the most popular ones. To try to be professional, it's not good. You're going to lose your, uh, your, uh, my public, <laughs> my reputation, your public, my, yes. my, your st reputation. my street cred. <laughs> street cred. Like I said, I wanted you in the video because your bosses are incredibly detailed. So like, I, was, I you can show off any one of your detailed bosses I want you want, I guess. And for people watching, this is PS says Mike does not work, so I'm doing this through Discord text. Trying to figure out which one that won't crash PA. Okay. Oh, this is a. Me Mecha, Mechanica, yeah. Oh yeah, that <laughs> I remember Mechanica. How many uh, objects did it take to make Mechanica? I believe over a hundred. It looks like over a hundred. I could have sworn some of your bosses took like four hundred or something, but that is a crazy amount of detail. Yeah, only two bosses take over four hundred parts: Grinders and Mr. Flesh. Mi mi okay, Mr. Flesh, that's a name. So that whole area right there, that's just all the objects you used for Mechanica. It cut, yeah, you got like Top Gear, Tooth 1, Tooth 2, that's a lot of, that's a lot of tooths. This was my first detailed boss, so it wasn't really organized well. And even if it wasn't organized, that it still looks amazing. So thank you Noodle, AirTech, and PS for being a part of this. I've linked their channels in the description so you can go check them out. I'm really glad I got this tutorial out when I did. And also, I've never collaborated with anyone on projects that weren't in school, so yeah, this was a first for me. And I also want to say thanks for 500 subscribers. I know it's not much compared to lots of people, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is a pretty big step forward, and I hope to keep growing my channel. Now for your regularly scheduled bloopers and mess ups. And I do plan to give her her own level at some point in the future, but. Oh, but. Oh my, right, two of them. That will, in this case, be a blue circle. A circle. I would like it to be a circle, please. There we go. If I switch the scale to two, two, nothing happens. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, I forgot to put this thing in. Yay.